Hey, what's going on guys? Um, thanks for joining into another Trout Freak YouTube video. Um, wanted to start off with a quick little tutorial on some of the tools of the trade. So let's say um, you're looking to get started into fly tying. You've been thinking about it. You've been like, okay, where do I start? Um, what tools do I need? Tools being the biggest ticket here, this is what this video is about. So I'm going to go through some of the basics of uh, the tools that you need to get started. I mean, that's 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 the key word here is getting started. This, this hobby can get really expensive really fast. And um, so I always start with the basics just to make sure because you can prices range for every single tool from like 10 bucks up to hundreds of dollars so start small get the feel get the grasp of things how they work what on which fly you can utilize them on etc um, but to get started there's very few tools you actually do need um, number one is going to be a vice this is sort of your foundation to where your hooks sit um, the different functions that they do, um, if they rotate or if they don't rotate, the I think the the vice is probably the most important one. Where if you're gonna splurge any little bit amount of money, it should be on your vice. Um, they have tons of vices. I think I have some not readily available to show you, but. They're typically the ones that come in like a kit. So if you go into any of like those box stores and uh, you, you tell them, oh, I'm looking to get into fly time, they're gonna send, they're gonna, they're gonna show you these boxes and they come with a kit. Um, it's usually those C clamp vices, the ones that you kind of screw on and tighten up against your desk or your fly bench. Um, I, I would sh try to stray away from them. I, I know. Whatever, not everybody's got money, right? Not everybody's got all these saves that they can splurge. Um, try to stay away from them simply because I find the metal in the jaws of the vice, they're just a lot cheaper. Um, I had one, I had two, I think, or three that were handed down for me, um, for my old man. And I think after maybe 10 or 15 flies, it, it just, it wasn't holding it wasn't holding the hooks properly, right? It was just like, it would do that. And then over time, it was almost as if it was just getting looser and looser without me being able to control it like I can with this one. But it would start to do this as I'm tying the fly. Um, or if I started to clamp down like uh, on the barbs and stuff, it would just deteriorate the metal. Um, I know when as soon as I got my vice, and this is the uh, a stone foam model, let me know the model. Um, but I found when I got this one, this, this helped, this helped my tying game tremendously. So if you're going to splurge, um, on getting started the fly tie, splurge on the vice. Uh, the next set of tools, they, I think they're absolute requirements. Number one is going to be a bobkin holder. Um, some people just refer to it as a bobkin, but these two come in a variety of shapes and sizes and makes and models um, and probably more importantly price um, go with the cheaper ones to start i think um, just so that you can learn sort of how they work how they feel when you're tying um, and also the one thing i'm going to just highly highly recommend is whatever bob can you decide to get just make sure it has a ceramic tip that's not going to focus but that ceramic tip is really going to help not cut your thread as you're tying um stainless steel ones that are just like brushed those two over time will get deteriorated and they'll start to cut your thread and nothing nothing in the world is more frustrating than tying an intricate fly and your thread gets cut and it's really hard sometimes depending on where you're at what stage you're at to get that thread started again uh, without messing up the complete fly so get a bobkin holder again they range in prices um 
I think this one, this one's two is from Stonefo, but it's, uh, I think it was about 25 bucks or something like that, but well worth it. They have cheaper ones as well. So like this is a standard, just cheaper one. And actually this is a good example of a non ceramic tip bobkin. You can see how old this one is. The brass is colors all coming off and stuff. So, but I still use it. I still use this every day. I have about four, five different bobkins, bobkin holders right now. Um, and I still use them almost every day. So yeah. Um, the next tool that you should have are one of these fancy contraptions. I remember when I first got one, I saw the videos when I was doing all my research. What do I need to get started? And I see all these video tutorials out there and they were all using this tool and it's called a whip finisher. I think this is probably right next to me at all times. Uh, you need this at a variety of stages depending on what type of fly you're tying. Uh, but this basically finishes your fly so that once you finish tying up all your materials, this sort of puts that final knot in there so your thread doesn't come undone. Um, or worsely, you're on the water and you're fishing away and you're smashing fish and now your fly just kind of explodes. So um, this is an absolute necessity. So get one of these. Again, they range in prices. Um, this one's from Loon. It's a little bit more expensive, but they have ones for, I've seen them for like six bucks. Uh, next on the list is, hold on, let me get some music here. Let's lighten up the mood a bit. There we go. All right, so the, another very important tool um, I should have probably touched on earlier is the bobkin threader. So it's a really, 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 really simple tool, flexible wire. And what this is used for is when you put your spool on, you got to get it through the little tube so that you get it in there and you get some tension and you can start tying flies. Well, if you're fumble fingers like me, this, uh, this can be quite challenging at times. So this tool makes it super easy. What you're basically doing, if I can get this right, is you're putting it through and then through the fat end of it, you're gonna feed your thread through. Like so, and once it's through there, you simply pull it down and through and it comes right out the bottom. Extremely handy tool, it's like three bucks. Get it. Um, next on the list of my absolute necessity for starting to tie flies is a brush and sort of Velcro on a stick here. So you can't really tell, but that's actually like Velcro and then there's a brush on one end. This comes in handy for various feathers um, where you wanna pluck out, sorry, this end, where you wanna pluck out and sort of brush and tease the hair out, give it more of that buggy look. Um, I use it all the time, almost on every single nymph um, that I use. The other side to this is more like a comb. This comes in handy for a lot of furs um, where they have a lot of uh, like hair and it's more, I think a lot of people refer to it as like under hair or under fur, um, where you want to brush that out because it's very thick um, and can ruin when you're trying to stack it and you're trying to tie it. This is a great way to sort of get that out. So again, get this, it's literally a piece of plastic uh, with a comb and a piece of Velcro on the end. Uh, again, I think it's no more than like five bucks. So get that. And we're going to need also some, they call hackle pliers. This comes in handy for, I think more smaller flies for me personally. Um, I like to use a lot of my hands to feel the threads as I'm sort of hackling away. Um, but this comes in really handy for, for smaller flies. 
Um, or if you still really want to keep that tension, so basically you're going to be able to clasp the feathers and then wrap them around with the tool in a variety of methods, obviously. Um, but can come in handy. I don't use it all the time, uh, but for uh, I think a lot of my dry flies, I definitely do on my dry fly hackles. Uh, and again, these come in different types of shapes and sizes, um, some for smaller hackles, some for larger hackle. Uh, so again, worth the investment, I think. Super cheap as well. Um, coming down to the last two, you're probably going to need is some sort of head cement. Uh, they come in a variety of brands. So I got this one, which is Unilac. I got this one, which is Superfly. And basically, you're gonna put this at the end of your fly. Once you're done using your whip finish tool to tie that knot, you're basically gonna put some of this a dab on it. It's just like glue, it's a cement that just seals everything together and you're ready to rock and throw it in the water. The last tool um, that I like to use a lot actually is, and not on a lot of people's lists, I haven't seen too many videos out there where they're actually using it. I love it because I don't, I don't like the look of cut fur or cut feathers. But sometimes you get a few stragglers that you don't want, especially on the head of the fly. Um, when I'm tying dry flies or especially like elk hairs, we get like those stragglers and they're pointing out the wrong way. Anyways, this tool, which is a tweezer, I actually stole it from my wife. Um, it helps grab those stragglers and actually just tear them out or rip them right as close as possible without having to get sort of like your scissors and like kind of get in there and, and, and nip and, and, and tuck, which is difficult because only these can get so close and these are super fine point scissors and sometimes it's hard a lot of the time i'll grab it and, and just kind of pluck it out the same way you would pluck out a hair you'd use this as well um, and i think it works fantastic again probably something i use on almost every fly as well so if you don't have tweezers go steal some from your wife or your mom or your sister good to go and of course lastly are the scissors. Um, you need these to cut your thread, cut your materials, cut your feathers, cut your hackle, cut your furs, cut your scud backs, you name it, you're gonna be cutting. It's wrapping and cutting, wrapping and cutting all day long. Um, and these two come in a variety of shapes, sizes, makes, models, fine tips, serrated blades, scissor point, curve point, you name it. There's tons for different applications. Um, to start, just get a basic one with some straight edge fine point scissors. So I got these ones which are super old um, and I kind of use them to cut my wire now. That's all I use that one for. This one's pretty good too, it's, it's fine point. Um, and it's got a little, one side's got a serrated edge. So I use this, I use this one specifically more so to cut like some of my thicker furs um, and feathers. Um, I have this one which is really, really super fine point as well. But I also use this to cut my wire because it's it's got one serrated edge, it's super sharp, super fine point so I can get right in there to like the edge of like the threading and stuff where you want to cut. But if you also, if you open it wider, aha, that little circle is actually a wire cutter so you don't have to worry about dulling out your actual blades that you can cut your wire with and you're good to go so that my friends is sort of the tools of the trade so just to recap you're gonna have your vise bobkin holder bobkin threader your whip finish tool scissors a brush slash velcro strip, head cement, hackle pliers, not a necessity but I highly recommend it, a pair of tweezers. Um, that will get you started in regards to the actual tools you need. Um, 
materials uh, that you're gonna need for like the first set of flies that you're gonna tie. I'm gonna talk about that in another video. I think I'm gonna start probably do one or two videos of some of the flies I think are best to get started fly tying um, to get you accustomed to how to wrap and all that stuff. So I'll do that in another video. Um, but yeah, those are the standard tools you're gonna need. Uh, any questions, shoot me a comment, send me a message through Instagram, whatever rocks your boat. I'm here to help. Thanks again for watching.